So thanks a lot for inviting us to, to participate in today's conference, but especially I would like to thank you for the work that you have done this, this year, because we really appreciate that you are providing a, a contribution to the vision. We have a lot of ambitions um, um, to put forward on the agenda and we need the support from everybody. So your, your help is, is really appreciated. I have prepared um, a short PowerPoint presentation just to, to give you some hints on where we are. So I will present you where we are and what we aim to do with the vision for, for rural areas, which, um, starting with a, a little background, I would like to quote some, some wordings from, from our president, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, referring to the rural areas and, and highlighting that they are the, the basis of, of Europe. And, and I think it is, I, I'm right to say that the roots of Europe are in, in rural areas. And I think the roots of all Europeans are in rural areas. Even if now, of course, the population in the cities is quite quite important, but I think in everybody in this, in this meeting and, and, and in Europe has um, finally um, the background in, in rural areas. And I think it is also important, this compromise for our president, highlighting that we will uh, preserve our rural areas and invest in their future invest in the future. And, and she announced at the same time that we will come with this long-term vision for rural areas, trying to reply to this uh, concern. Looking and putting some numbers on the table, in terms of population, rural areas in the European Union um, represent around 26% of the total. So this means around 116 million people and 76% of the territory. So as you can see, and, and of course, you, all of you are, are aware, in terms of population, the rural areas have a much less density than, than an average and, and the situation in the EU. But in terms of territory, it is almost three, three quarters of, of the total. So it is a, a very important number. In terms of jobs, I think it is more or less aligned with the population. So it's 27% of, of total EU jobs. Looking at the challenges, and, and I see that you are also in the, in the framework of, of Sherpa, trying to identify what are the main challenges. I think in, in more, more or less in all European countries, um, rural areas face the big challenge of access to public and private services. And there I highlight the issue of internet. 40% lack access to high-speed internet. And this issue, of course, it is very relevant for some, some ages like the young, the children, etc. So this uh, creates an additional problem uh, related to generational renewal, which is also a challenge, a challenge in general in the, Euro in the European Union everywhere. So we have um, an aging um, uh, situation. If you look at the rural areas, this aging, it's uh, even more exacerbated. If we look at the remote rural areas, then the numbers go really, really high. Mm. Then looking at the situation and the forecast for, for population development, we see that 60% of the rural population lives in regions which are demographically shrinking so that they are losing population. Here I put you the graph about the situation of internet. So the blue line is the total and the orange line is the situation in rural areas. And I think we have to recognize that there has been a, a very, very big progress since 2010. So in 2010, <laughs> the access to next generation uh, internet, it was um, less than 10%. And now we are around 60. But still, uh, there are 40% of people in rural areas that do not have access to this uh, good internet with the associated challenges in terms of, for example, access to online services like e-health, e-education, et cetera. And especially now in this um, situation of pandemic, this access to internet has been um, felt by, by many people as, as really essential. And I was in a, in a presentation to some majors of, of rural areas in, in, in some regions of Spain. And they, I was told that a, a number of families in some little villages were even considering to move to the city because the kids were not able to follow their online education during these months of lockdown. So, so I think this issue of internet is really um, a top priority to try to, um, to, on the one hand, of course, um, facilitate that the rural population benefits from the opportunities, but also for them to access to the basic services that can be provided through this mean. Looking at the demographic trends, here I present you the, the perspectives uh, from ESPON project uh, for the year 2032. And the, the regions that you see color are those that face uh, particular challenges. And you see that um, quite, I think most of the all European Union countries 
in, in some parts of their territory, they, they are affected by this um, um, risk of, of shrinking or, or losing population. And of course, the situation is different. And so, for example, in the eastern part, you, you see a very, very big demographic decline in recent years. It has been a very, very fast process. In my country, Spain, as well as in other countries like Portugal, France, or Italy, this has been a quite a slow process that started in the 50s, and the population was um, disappearing very slowly, and now the situation is that um, many places, uh, places are really depopulated. And then the situation in the Nordic, of course, it's a, it's a different situation, also associated to difficult weather conditions. And there, um, as you know, the efforts are going also into the managing this shrinking population, so, so how to help the people to live better with this uh, declining population situation. These are the challenges, but of course, there are many opportunities ahead. First, of course, when we look at this circular and bio-based economy, process for the bio-based economy come from the rural areas. So I think the, the, the big opportunity, it is there. And I think there are many, many chances to increase the value added that stays in the rural area, because sometimes rural areas just provide the resource, which is managed elsewhere. But I think um, in, in, thanks to the digital, there is possibility to increase the, the contribution in, to the added value staying in this rural area. And therefore, of course, the rural areas can contribute to the ecological and digital transition. And, and I think I, I would go even further saying that it is not possible for Europe to recuperate without the contribution from the rural areas to the ecological and digital transition. Uh, well, we are having this um, um, remote conference and I was not following Sherpa last year, but I, uh, I am sure that probably you had a, a physical conference. And, and I think this COVID-19 crisis um, put a completely different situation that we, we could ever imagine before. And I think now the people are looking into rural areas with renewed eyes. So first of all, everybody or very large people had telework or is teleworking. For example, here in, in the commission, now we are not allowed to go to the buildings and we, we have to do telework for the time being. And then on the other hand, and the people, of course, in this situation of confinement appreciate further the green spaces. So many, many people are considering to move forward to rural areas and, and there are even some initiatives trying to facilitate this trend. So the, the opportunities are there and, and I think there is a, a very high chance that they, they could benefit rural areas. Now going to the vision. The vision in, in terms of the policy documents is going to be a communication from the commission that we have scheduled for the second quarter of 2021 for June. And in principle, we will look about this vision in, in rural areas in 2040 and the actions that we need to put in place in order to achieve it. But um, we also want to launch a debate on the role of rural areas in, in society from across the, the European Union, taking into account the opinions from rural people, from urban people, from everybody. We want to launch a really wide debate on the role of rural areas in society. Why now? First, because we want to signal that the Commission takes uh, rural areas seriously, and we want, uh, because we want to address these pressing issues that I mentioned before, so these demographic challenges, and also this other um, challenge of access to infrastructure and services. Also, because we want to highlight these new challenges and opportunities um, linked to COVID-19, but also the others I have referred to, and then to, to try to orientate the actions to, so that the, um, our rural areas can fully benefit from them. How we want to do that? Of course, I think it wouldn't make sense if we, if we do all this from Brussels. <laughs> this, I think everybody would, uh, would agree with me. And this is why um, at the heart of the vision, we place a very wide and, and big public consultation then we also are undertaking a, a, an analysis and, and with the collaboration of many, many people across the commission. And also we are feeding with the outcome of several projects, including Sherpa, but uh, not only, we have also some other Horizon 2020 projects. And then we have a, a foresight element that we are undertaking with the help of our colleagues from the Joint Research Center, and uh, which is facilitated uh, by the European Network of, of Rural Development. It is interesting to see that the commissioners responsible for this vision are three. 
So first, it is the, the Commissioner Wojciechowski dealing with agriculture and rural development, then Commissioner Ferreira dealing with uh, regional and cohesion policy, but I think it is interesting to see that the Vice President coordinated the work is uh, Vice President Suiza, which is responsible for democracy and demography. And these two issues normally have never been in, analyzed in, in EU policy point of view um, when looking at the rural areas. So I think this is a widening the perspective for this initiative. As I said, it doesn't make that we may, it doesn't make sense if we make this consultation from Brussels. And this is why we, we do a big public consultation um, with a special focus on people living in rural areas, local and regional authorities. Mm, the public consultation is going to, to have different elements that I will present in the, in the, in the next slide. But at the timing of the, of the vision is June 2021. And in between the, the different proposals for the future CAP, future regional and cohesion policies will be already adopted. This is why to ensure that the needs of rural areas are duly taken into account in the policy which we are finalizing, um, the three commissioners send a letter to the relevant minister, ministries in the ministers in the different countries and um, stressing the need to take the, the needs of rural areas in this cohesion policy and, and CAP strategic plans. On the state of play, these are the main elements that we are considering for the public consultation. So we, we had a, a feedback period for the roadmap during the month of um, summer and finishing in September. And then we have an online questionnaire for, for which you still have some hours to, to reply in case you didn't do it already. So it is finalizing today. We hope to, to reach the 2000 answers. So, so let's, let's see, and I, I hope that after this conference we will get um, many, many other, other replies. We had also um, made almost 30,000 interviews in all member states in the context of Eurobarometer. And there we, we had some specific questions on rural areas and in particular about the challenges and the access to infrastructure and, and services. Then we have uh, many events, including of course the, the Sherpa conference. And we have the foresight thematic group where we, we have representatives from um, all EU member states uh, covering also um, different expert fields and having representatives from the civil society, from the public administration, from uh, stakeholder groups, etc. In March, we will have the final conference organized by the European Network of Rural Development, where we will present the outcome of all these in consultation activities. And then, of course, I would like to say that the, the European Economic and Social Committee and the Committee of the Regions are also looking very um, closely to rural issues. The Economic and Social Committee um, adopted an opinion in September and the Committee of the Region in December and providing us some recommendations for the future work on the, on the vision. I also would like to, to inform you about this initiative and I, I would like to encourage also to inform about this and to, to use it. And, and it is a package that um, a colleague from, from DG Agri has developed trying to facilitate that any rural group can organize a workshop. So we are providing the material for this workshop in order to capture what is the situation in the rural area and what are the local examples and stories that could be provided. And the groups that use this package, we, we would welcome very much if they can report back to us about the conclusions, because this I think will be com complementing the, the work that we are undertaking. And, and I think for us, we are putting a lot of efforts to try to reach the different rural areas across the European Union, but of course it is very challenging. So any support and any, any help on that would be very much appreciated. So I arrived to the end of the presentation. I forgot to add the, the email where you can send the, the contributions in, in case you, you participate in these um, package that I, I just presented. So I, I will put it in the chat there. So in case any of you organize any events, we would welcome very much your contribution. So I thank, thank you very much for your attention and I look forward for the debate today and tomorrow. Thanks.